Will you be uh, seeing your brother at all today? I haven't arranged to. No, it's just that Mike's on about me talking to him, catering for some do of his, but I think that's that. I mean, what do you think? Has he offered it yet? No, well, he just mentioned that he might need someone, you know, someone to set up this um, do his doing. Oh, well, don't ask me. Seems nice, your brother. He is nice. But I've got enough on, haven't I? I think I'll tell him no. Right. What do you think? What do you think? No, I think I should. Do you want a sausage with it? Oh, uh, have you got an appointment? No. Oh, look, I'm sorry then, I'm on my own. Okay, thanks. Maxine, yeah. pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. I'm gonna kill you. <sighs> really sorry about that. You're all right. Lovely. Anyway, Fiona, we were all packed into that bulky little house. <gasps> I don't know what Stephen must have thought. Mm, I expected coke. Oh, yes, yes, he always copes. Mind you, he's used to international hotels, you see. Mind you, he'd never complain. Mm, must have the common touch, eh? <laughs> no, no, he's not common, not for a minute. He's Canadian. Mm. Anyway, there we all were, like slaves in a gala. <laughs> Josie brings the birthday cake through, and the candles go out. Well, Fiona, you should have heard it. Talk about fuss about nothing. And then Martin, he's so daft, he said, whoever blew the candles out must have been a ghost. <sighs> Is that bad taste of what, eh? <sighs> I mean, in that very house, Fiona, where... Ooh. Oh, dear. Anyway... Where's Maxine? In bed, with earplugs in. Oh, well, it's nice that you can take turns, isn't it? I mean, there's something to be said for not being busy. Hiya. 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 Oh, yeah, I'll do us a favour. Take these back for the kids. They didn't get here at the party and they won't be in our house. As long as you promise me. What? That I be not cast a cloak oh, over them. don't. <laughs> You've heard about the haunted house, have you, Alma? What? Uh, no more visitation. <laughs> if I see it, I'll chuck some at it. What? Like a crucifix? Anything but that. <laughs> what I've heard about Ivy, if you showed her a crucifix, she'd sooner eat it than run. <laughs> How are you getting on with Stephen? Oh, I've decided not to go for it. Oh, do me a favour. That's why you set up AB Catering, so you wouldn't be stuck in a greasy spoon all your life. I thought you thought that was all I was ever fit for. Girl, I'll ask you, haven't I always said that she's worth more than this? I remember you saying she cooked a great chip oh. and she should stick to what she's good at. Do you want me to phone Stephen? Why, what for? Set up a proper meeting so you can do what women are best at, gentle persuasion. No, I've told you, I've, I've decided against it. Ah, but I know you want to do it. I know that you want me to do it, but strange enough, Mike, that is not the same thing. Yeah, the week's you. Well, what about it? Take him there, let him see what sort of operation you can organise. I'll drive you there, then leave you alone at a quiet little table for two. Oh, I am so slow. What do you mean? Well, that's why you wanted me to get my hair done, so I'd look good for Stephen across a candlelit table. So what's wrong with that? Uh, hey, Gail, Gail, what do you think of this? I mean, he's not my husband. I mean, he's certainly not my business manager. He's my pimp. <laughs> This is my very successful son, Stephen. Vera. Oh, oh, pleased to meet you, love. I like your pub. <laughs> oh, so what pubs like in Canada, then? Well, they're not exactly pubs. No, they're more them mounty bars, aren't they? They say the paradise. So how long are you here for? Uh, not long enough. Oh, so we see more of you, then? Possibly. They say you're on business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not just to see your mother. Oh, well... Yeah, well, both, of course. Uh, sure, happy coincidence. <laughs> uh, but you've never been round here before? And not exactly to this neck of the woods, no. No, but you have been to England. But it seems a while since we've seen your Terry Vera. Is he, um, at liberty these days? Right, what can I get you? Oh, be so thanks. <laughs> so what you stood there for then, eh? Folk want to get to this bar. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was Stephen. <laughs> uh, can I get you something? 
Well, I really feel I should apologize to you. I've been here a while now, but um, there's been so much going on in my life. I haven't really made time to get to know you. That is for us to get to know each other, Amy. Well, let's do something about it. How are you fixed tonight? Sounds great. Okay. Um... Oh, hi, Stephen. Hi, Alma. You look nice. No, I don't. Uh, look, this is, uh, this is uh, completely Mike's idea, but um, so don't blame me. But uh, what are you doing tonight? Oh, uh, tonight is a... It's OK. Go on. No, well, only Mike suggested uh, that um, I took you out to dinner. Well, I'm in business. I mean, totally business. Only the, uh, the wheat sheaf, which is my uh, catering business. Well, I, I run it. Well, mm -hmm. I, no, well I, I set it up. Well, well, we thought, well, no, he thought that it might be a good idea if I took you there to see uh, the sort of thing I do with a, with a view to... Um... My presentation next week. Uh, exactly. Mm. Right, then. I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Mike. Are you sure you won't join us? No, no, this is our side of things. She did all this, you know. Set the whole lot up. She's a very clever woman. So don't you be fooled. I'm sure. Right, it's uh, quarter eight. Pick up half ten, OK? Have a good time. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Here. A bottle of your best champagne over there. It goes on my bill, OK? OK. I'm a bit embarrassed, really. <laughs> Why? Well, I think uh, Mike's sort of overselling me a bit. I mean, I was their catering uh, consultant. Uh, but uh, I don't really have anything to do with him now. But it's a big thing to set this kind of place up. Oh, well. <laughs> but I can understand your embarrassment. My mother's been overselling me ever since I arrived at Weatherfield. Oh, but you deserve it. I mean, you are incredibly successful. <laughs> no, Alma, really. Oh, Stephen, you are. I mean, representing your company on the other side of the world. I mean, that's incredible. Cog in a wheel. Well, pretty big wheel. <laughs> I'm no Donald Trump, whatever my mother says. Well, I'm no Delia Smith. <laughs> oh, do you know, Mike would kill me if you could hear me. I'm supposed to be giving you the hard sell. No, what I mean, Stephen, is I am up to this job, uh, but I'm no tycoon, not by any stretch of the imagination. Well, we're both in the same situation. It's my mother's pride that makes her talk about me the way she does, and it's Mike's pride that makes him oversell you. Not that I'm sure he does. It's my guess that you're just as good as he says you are. Thanks. Thanks. No, it's very hard to judge. There's a deal of interest. A lot of smiles, a lot of handshakes, but nothing on paper. This uh, presentation is very important, Alma. Right. Which is when and if we do the deals. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great meal. So, shall I put you something down on paper? Would you? Sure. Hmm. I really like that uh, starter we had with the king prawns. I mean, I liked it all, but uh, for the presentation... Oh, I... no, no, no. I think, I think I know what you need. So, shall I um, set you out a proposal? Great, thanks. Yeah, great. i am sorry. I mean, fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, you see, I'm just a glorified salesman. Oh, I can tell you more than that. No. Well, I'm just a cook, then. Well, judging from tonight, you're a culinary witch. Well, what do I say to that? <laughs> it's been very nice. Yeah. It's been great. Yes, it's been great, I guess. Uh, no, I mean, I know. Definitely great. Oh, hello, Mike. So then, have we got a deal? Oh, Mike, please. Well, that's me, you see, Steve. The vulgar commercial instinct. Straight to the bone. <laughs> but tell me the truth. My wife got you where she wants you, eh? <laughs> oh, 